Dodger great Jackie Robinson will be standing tall once a new sculpture in the works is completed. Susan Spencer now with the story of a home run handshake. Jackie Robinson's first home run for the Brooklyn Dodgers Montreal minor league team was a game changer. What happened next was astonishing. This has been called the handshake of the century. You know, which sounds a little dramatic. Do you think that's overstating it? Well, we've had other important handshakes internationally and here at home, but this was a harbinger of the civil rights movement to come. Robinson, of course, would go on to be a civil rights advocate. After finishing his remarkable Hall of Fame baseball career. But first came that handshake. It was April 18, 1946, his debut as the only black man to play in an all-white league. They wanted him to fail. They wanted him to fail. So no surprise, says baseball fan Mark Melland, that the other players didn't even acknowledge Robinson's first homer. All save the next batter up, George Shotgun Shuba. If you look at the photographs, you can see the pure joy of the moment. He didn't think black, white. As George uh, was known to say in later life, I would have shaken his hand if he was technicolor. Mellon, also a world-renowned sculptor, has studied every minute detail of those photos as he works on a seven-foot-tall statue of the handshake. You have captured both the athleticism and the joy. When you see it outdoors with the sun shining, uh, it, it should just make you smile. <laughs> When it's finished, the bronze statue will stand in this park in Youngstown, Ohio, George Shuba's hometown. At the time, for Shuba, this would have been something of a risk, right? With his teammates, I would think so. He may have gotten some jaded looks in terms of, what are you doing? Why do you think he did it? He didn't have to do that. I think he did it because it was the right thing to do. Herb Washington, a businessman in the Youngstown area, is a co-chair of the statue committee. You've been involved in a lot of charitable things. What was it particularly about this one that made you want to support it? Jackie Robinson. <laughs> Period. Period. Jackie Robinson. Washington himself played on the World Series winning Oakland A's in 1974. For him, this is personal. Someone had to be first. Someone had to stand in the gap and take some unbelievable punishments and cruelty so that the next person may not have to endure as much. What would life have been like for Jackie Robinson at that time? I can't even begin to wrap my head around the weight that he must have had on his shoulders, not just for himself personally, but all people of color. This had to have been unbelievably painful. There were times when it was very painful, and particularly when you're being attacked and you can't respond. It's a beautiful Isn't picture. Isn't that lovely? That's your wedding day. Yeah. Jackie Robinson's widow, Rachel, spoke with CBS Sunday Morning in 2013. What we worried about, for instance, pictures would throw at his head. I worried about him getting hurt. And with good reason. Robinson routinely received death threats. I felt like it was us against the world, you know. It was in that atmosphere that George Shuba just did what came naturally. People have to remember that George didn't ask to be the batter up, and he did not know Jack was going to hit a home run. He always taught me as a young kid, if you're ever put on the spot, just do the right thing and everything will work out fine. Shuba's son, Mike, says that handshake photo was such a treasured keepsake, his dad displayed it in the family living room until the day he died. This was long before the Civil Rights Movement, before Rosa Parks. In that context, some people might think a very brave thing to do. 
I, I agree with you, yes. Other members of the team, some players didn't even want to bat after Jackie. There were other players, too, that refused to be teammates with Jack. It's uh, sad to see that, but uh, George and Jack became friends, and they showed America that uh, America was maturing. What do you hope this statue says to say the father with his kid who walks into the park two years from now and looks up and sees it? I hope the father is able to explain to the kid what the statue represents and how in that child's lifetime, hopefully racism and bigotry won't exist. Everything about it uh, is uplifting. There is the dark backstory of why is this so significant? But it's America emerging uh, from the war, from a time of segregation, with a realization that we can be better. A realization as simple as reaching out a hand.